Hello, everybody. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We're praying for you today, praying for your families, praying for situations around this world that God would just uh, answer our prayers and that revival would come to the many parts of the world today and that Jesus' name will be glorified. We pray for presidents and for governors and for leaders of different nations around the world that you would give them wisdom from above, Father, and helping them in these uh, trying times in Jesus' name. Hello, Laura. God bless you. I want to encourage people not to be judgmental with leadership during this time because, wow, I would hate to be them in this situation. So they don't need us to be criticizing them. And even though we might know for sure they're wrong, let's just pray for them and believe God in Jesus' name. Hello, Kay. Hello, Bernice. Hello, Judith. God bless you. We're going to have a very interesting study today. I bet you never heard this one before. What to do with a stick of dynam. <laughs> what to do with the stick of dynamite. There's a story of a man that went fishing and he always caught more fish than anybody else. And that man, he was the king of bringing in fish. And people would, would fish in the same lake that he did and uh, they just couldn't, couldn't get it together. They wouldn't, couldn't believe it. And so the game warden, he began to find out about this great fisherman. And so he said to the fisherman, he said, do you mind if I come with you and show me how you catch this fish? And so the fisherman went there with the game warden and the fisherman took a stick of dynamite and lit it and threw it into the water and it exploded. And then all the dead fish came to the top. The, um, uh, Game warden went crazy. I'm going to put you in jail. This is illegal. And so then the man uh, took another stick of dynamite and handed it to the game warden. And the game warden had no choice but throw it into the river. And uh, this, there are times in our lives where we get a stick of dynamite. All of a sudden, something happened. Everything was a nice day seemed to be no problems whatsoever, and then, bam, we get handed a stick of dynamite. It's like the teenager who is offered drugs. He gets this stick of dynamite. He has to make a split decision what he's going to do with that offer. It's the businessman that's offered to take uh, a bribe or some money underneath the table, some illegal funds, and he gets handed the, uh, the stick of dynamite. What's he going to do? A person that's offered some juicy, juicy gossip. It's a stick of dynamite. What are you going to do? A student that has an opportunity to cheat on a test, and he gets handed the stick of dynamite. What's he going to do? Rather than defuse the bomb, many times people let it, it explode. We find ourselves doing something that we hate. Everybody gets a stick of dynamite in your life, lots of them, and we have to make the decisions. But God's given us a word, two basic tools <clears throat> that we can do to keep cool in the invitation of sin. The scripture says in Matthew 26, 40, and this is the solution for us, okay? When you get offered something, you get offered a piece of dynamite, you get offered a temptation. This is what the word of God says. Matthew 26, verse 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Verse 41, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he tells us to watch 
and to pray so that we don't fall into temptation. So we stay alert. We keep our eyes open. When you are, when you see sin coming, you duck and you go the other way. When you anticipate, anticipate an awkward encounter, turn around, go the other way. Um, my Corey's four little boys many years ago, we'd be going through the mall and all of a sudden, um, the, the boy, the boys just start yelling, grandpa, grandpa, look the other way, look the other way. Don't look that way. Look the other way. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Well, we were walking by Victoria's secrets, which Victoria doesn't have her many secrets the way she dresses. And I started laughing. Uh, Corey had trained the boys, don't look at that stuff. And uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, there are times where I'd be walking down the, the road or walking in a street, you know, and I, I see this young woman, whatever age, doesn't matter, and she's not dressed properly. I have to make a choice as a man to look the other way. All right, I remember I was a brand new Christian. And I wanted to be holy, you know. And uh, I was in Kmart many years ago. And it was summertime. And here comes this girl with a halter top on. <laughs> that she needed more cloth. Trust me. I looked at that. And I, because I'm a holy man of God, I turned the other way. And I did not want to see that one. And then kabam, as I turned, one came worse than the other one. And I said to God, I lifted my hands in the air, I'm trying to be a Christian man, but the way people dress is getting very difficult. And he said to me, Gordon, you cannot dress everybody, you know, but you can look the other way. So when you anticipate something that could happen in your life, that you're being handed a stick of dynamite, you need to respond in the, in, the, in the proper way. So when you sense temptation coming, you turn and you go the other way. All Jesus is saying is, pay attention. You know your weakness. I know my weakness. Oh, it might be a big surprise to you. Everybody has a weakness. Everybody has an area in their life where the devil just continues to keep uh, pounding away at it. And so that's why we need to, to, uh, uh, to be alert and watch. Um, when you're driving, you don't close your eyes. You keep your eyes open and you need to be alert. And if there's some big holes in the road, you, you try to avoid them and try to go away. You know the situation in which you're weakness and you're vulnerable. Stay out of those situations. Young people, stay out of the back seat. My father taught me, he said, I want you home by 11 because people that stay out after 12 usually do bad things. And I never forgot that. And so stay away from the late hours, stay away from the clubs, stay away from certain movies that, that uh, are an entrapment to you because you need to watch and pray. Whatever it is that gives Satan a foothold in your life, stay away from it. Watch out. When I became a brand new Christian, man, before I was a Christian, I mean, I was the life of the party and, and blah, blah, blah. And so when I became a born again believer, I had to literally, my, my old friends stopped and thank God I found a church that just embraced me and loved me and invited me because now I had to have a complete brand new group of friends. Oh, I would like to tell you that I went back to my friends and I gave my testimony and they all got saved, but that didn't happen with me. But I knew that I had to be careful of the places that I went even the songs that I uh, used to listen to. Now, this is, I've been saved now 53 years. And there are times when I go into a place of business and there's a song being sung. It, bam, takes me right back to some of the places that I used to go to. So the only music I listen to, and you, it's up to you, I, is Christian music. 
because I don't want to be lured, lured back into that. And so we need to watch. We need to be careful. You also need to be careful with the friends that you associate with. There are some people, and I'm sorry to even to say this, there's even some people in the church because they're not living the way they're supposed to live for God. There are some people even in the church that you're going to have to not have that close of ties or relationship with. So because you're going to be, you're going to be uh, given that, that uh, uh, piece of dynamite and, and, and you either throw it away or else it's going to explode in your face. Now, so one of the things that people hang on to that stick of dynamite when they're given, you know, an opportunity to sin or do something, they're too embarrassed to say, no, I don't drink anymore. I haven't had a drink in uh, 53 years. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I don't want that. Haven't smoked a cigarette in, in 53 years. Don't want that. Haven't uh, uh, done things like I used to do because uh, uh, I don't want that anymore. And so you, but listen to me. I'll never forget this as long as I live. I was working at a place and I, I happened to be uh, uh, like a, a, a nurse's assistant or a doctor's assistant. I would, you would take you, they, you'd come into the place and it was a walk-in clinic and I would take your temperature, blah, 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 your high blood pressure, your pressure, and uh, find out why did you come see the doctor today. So I was the only male nurse on that staff there. One of the women came up to me and said to me, anytime you want to have sex with me, just let me know. I thought I was going to pass out. I, I went to the bathroom and I cried like a little boy. I was so embarrassed. And you see, before you were a Christian, you prayed for something like that to happen, you know. But after you're a Christian. So this lady handed me a stick of dynamite. I had a choice. Let it blow up in my face. Let it destroy my reputation. Let it destroy my marriage or throw the piece of dynamite away. And I threw it away. Blessed be the name of Jesus and never spoke to her again and had and never was alone with her in that building because I did not trust her. And that's crazy. And so you say, well, what? as a man, well, what, the, 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 no. The devil was trying to destroy me. That was not a compliment. That was a setup. That was a piece of dynamite that was given to me, and I threw it away. I did not want it to blow up in my face. Are you listening today? There are things that always, the devil will always give you a piece of dynamite. So I've made, you know, you cannot, you cannot be alone with that woman, that's for sure. Okay, so you need to watch. You need to be smart, Christian. You need not to put yourself in a situation that's going to make the stick of dynamite blow up in your face and just ruin everything. And I think, let me repeat if I didn't say this, I think sometimes people are prideful because they don't, they, they keep it, you know, because they don't want to be the oddball. They don't want to be the wacko, weirdo, super duper Christian person, you know. Hey, Get rid of the stick of dynamite. Throw it away. And more than that, the Bible tells us to watch. So don't put yourself in that situation again. So if you have problems with drugs, don't hang out with drug addicts. If you have problems with alcohol, don't hang out with people who drink. And when you are in a place and they offer you a beer, you just say, no, thank you. And, uh, and they say, oh, come on. Then I would go to work and tell them, I told you once that I don't want any, and I'm going to get up and leave now. I mean, these are not your friends. Your friends would say, well, hey, please forgive me. I know you have had an alcohol problem. Please forgive me. I'll never happen again. So, but you are embarrassed not to, not to take that piece of dynamite and throw it back in their face and let it blow up in their face instead of yours. So uh, if, if, if music gets you back into the mood of doing something wrong on godly music, then you're going to have to get out of there. Uh, the, the movies that people watch. I remember one time a Christian, hello, a Christian recommended a movie to Ramona and I. And they said, it's a nice movie. I said, oh, okay. So we went there and we lasted five minutes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we got up and left. And so from that day forward, I never took a recommendation from another Christian about a movie because uh, I'm telling you, their, their standards are a little different than mine. And so I, as a man, I cannot watch a, a movie where this gal is, you know, half naked. And so I, I can't do that. Okay. He said, well, if you are really strong, well, I know, I know, and I don't want that stick of dynamite in my hand. So I throw it away before it blows up. Now, okay. So you watch, you be smart. Okay. Then the next thing you, the, the next tool is prayer. Prayer isn't telling God anything new. Hello. Before you, if, if, okay, if you pray a prayer, uh, 30 days from now, God already knows about it. He already knows the prayer that you're going to pray 30 days from now. So in, in anything you pray about, it does not surprise God. What prayer does, it invites God to walk with you in the pathway of your life. And so you pray and you're asking God to watch ahead. Is there anything that's coming my way that you are going to help me to avoid that in Jesus' name? It's like a GPS. Is there fallen trees? Is there rocks in the road? And so when we pray, we're asking God to help us. And he'll say, I don't want you to go there. I don't want you to be with that person. Well, why not? God says no. And so we pray and we, we pray and we say, Father, direct my steps today. Guide me and direct me in Jesus' name so that I do not make any mistakes and so I pray for protection that the devil cannot bring any poisonous darts to me in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll watch over me and guide me and direct me so that I will not fall into the pit. It's called watching and praying. Praying, God, lead me, guide me, because he knows what's ahead. Then the Holy Spirit can send out an alarm inside of you. Me, me, me. Say, oh, stop right there. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't be with that person. Watch out. And so he sets out the alarm. So we watch and we pray. So do not let the stick of dynamite that the devil hands to you. Yes, he always hands out those sticks of dynamite. You're going to have to make a decision. Many times, escucha, many times a split second decision. Ramon and I were driving down a road. It was um, on Highway 69, I think. We were going towards I-17. We were just clipping along. I am not a speeder because I don't like to get tickets. I don't like to give money to people. That's not my idea. So we're going down there. And as we're going down this hill, there is a car in the middle of the road. Stopped. Mm. I had whoo, to make a split second decision of what I was going to do to avoid that car. And thanks be unto God that we were alert and we were able to whip around that car and he didn't have his blinkers on. He had nothing. I mean, I don't know what happened and fufa. That was a stick of dynamite to try to destroy our lives. This is why we need to watch and pray and the Holy Spirit can give you an alert. Slow down. Be careful in driving or in your life. So I want to encourage you today that God wants to help you so you don't mess up. God wants to help you so you live a victorious Christian life. And when the stick of dynamite is handed to you, you throw it away immediately so it doesn't blow up in your face. I hope you learned something today. I learn something every time I preach. I really do. <laughs> I think sometimes God, I think the preacher learns more than the people who are listening. 
Thank you for listening today. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring this message back to your remembrance. I want to thank you all for praying for us. I want to thank you all for your financial support. You're just wonderful, and I do appreciate it very, very much. We'll see you tomorrow. We love you. Remember, watch and pray.